things we get for free can have immense value in our day-to-day -day lives. Today, we're going to talk about a few of those, and I hope you'll stick around. I'm continuing to grow my celery that I brought with me. Both of these were from scraps at the store from cutting off the base. And I'm continuing to grow my green onions that were also purchased at the store and just planted in pots. And I will transplant those when I get home. Welcome to my channel, everyone. I'm Bonita from Pennies to Dollars. I am from rural Kansas. And right now I'm wintering in my camper in Southern Texas. And I hope that you will stick around as we talk about frugal living, saving money, cutting expenses, and some depression era tips thrown in there as well. I'm the daughter of depression era parents, and I love to share some of their memories with you as we go through our frugal journeys together. So today we're going to talk about things that we get for free and things that I personally have got for free that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, as many of you know, I'm wintering in Southern Texas with my in-laws being just right behind me in a trailer in a 55 and over park. And I get to spend a lot of time with them. I have spent more quality time with them during this little jaunt that I've had in South Texas than I have the entire marriage of my husband and I together. And I value that time. It has been such a fun journey getting to know them better and getting to spend time with them doing things. One of the things that I get for free, and maybe you can too, is knowledge from our elders. I try to remember a lot of the things that my mom and dad taught me and showed me and told me about, but they've been gone for a long time now. And some of those memories start to fade over time. And then sometimes those things are just lost forever that they told us, or we don't quite remember them the way that they were told to us, even though we try. And I have been learning so much about my in-laws and some of their upbringing while I've been down here. Now they were quite a bit younger than my parents. My parents were from the depression era and my husband's parents are like 20 years younger than that. So it's a different generation that they were raised in, but they were both raised very frugally. And now they don't live frugally. They don't have to anymore, but they spent a lot of their early years and their younger years living frugally so that they could have money for when they retired to live better than they did. I think everybody wants that for themselves, for their children. My mother-in-law had even told me about how she would go on business trips and they would give them a per diem for food, but she wouldn't spend it. She would go and buy things at the store, make food in her room, and take it and pack it and put it in the refrigerator during the day, during these business meetings. And there were times she would have a cold egg sandwich so that she could pocket that per diem money and take it home to use it in her household. Those are really great memories and great examples of sacrifice to be able to save money for the future. She also told me about how she grew up in Southeast Kansas and how her mother would go and pick what they called alley greens. They would pick things like lamb's quarter, which I didn't know what that was, but it's a plant and it doesn't grow where I live, but I guess it grew there. Dandelion greens and some other greens that were edible and they were just from plants that grew wild and they would boil these with a ham bone and it would make them less bitter. And they would be very tasty when they were done because of the ham bone that they cooked it with. I think some of those stories are just amazing. I love hearing about that. There are a lot of people that 
forage for food and know which things are safe to pick and which things are safe to eat that just grow wild. I don't have that kind of knowledge, but we got into that conversation one day about that. And I've been very interested in dandelion greens and doing some things with that this summer that I'm going to try and share with you when I do. But she loaned me this book and it is the Forager's Guide to Wild Foods. I spent time looking through it. It talks about different plants that are edible, which ones are poisonous, which parts of the plants you can eat, how to cook them, what medicine values they have. And she loaned this to me. I'll link it in the description box if it's something you might want to look through. But I absolutely love this. And again, she loaned it to me for free. So another wonderful, valuable thing that I gained just from this conversation with her that led to me borrowing this book. She also had me try some persimmon pudding. Now, I don't even know what a persimmon is. I guess, again, they grew wild in southeast Kansas. She told me that you pick them after the first frost and when they are bright orange. That's when they're at their peak. See, these are things that get lost along the way in some of our generations. And then my father-in-law's family made this persimmon pudding that ended up tasting kind of like a gingerbread brownie, but they call it a pudding. And I got to try that for the first time in my life. And it was really, really good. So I wanted to share some of those memories with you. That's one of the reasons I have this channel is I want to share some of those things so that they don't get lost and those memories are preserved and other people can benefit from them. Now, some of the things that I get for free that I use more in my modern day life is, as you know, I'm wintering in South Texas and I'm trying to focus more on my health. I'm trying to walk more. I'm trying to eat better. I'm trying to spend more time outdoors. I think I'm starting to get a little bit of a tan. I don't know. I hope so. But I use the Pacer app. It's P-A-C-E-R on my phone and it is free. I don't have an Apple Watch. I don't have a Fitbit. I don't have anything like that to track my steps. But this free Pacer app will track your steps and track your route. And then you can link that with a free app called My Fitness Pal, and it will download the calories you burned to My Fitness Pal, where you can log your food and set goals and see how much you have in calories to eat that day if you monitor your calories. Now for me, I need to exercise and I need to watch my calories. That's the only way I can lose weight. I've tried many, many things over the years. Nothing works but those two things together. And so I love using my Pacer app with the MyFitnessPal app and link them together. They both have free options to use. I only use the free options that link those. I don't pay for any premium version of anything. I'm wearing the shirt I got today that was from that women's free swap that I shared with you in one of the last videos. I love this shirt and I thought once I put it on today, you know, it kind of goes with my hair starting to turn gray. And I may want to look at some of the colors that I have in my wardrobe based on that. I feel like with the tan that I've got and my hair starting to go gray, that this is looking good. Now, my mother-in-law wears tons of white. My daughter says white is God's way of telling us he has a sense of humor because it's so hard to keep clean. My mother-in-law loves white. She's able to keep it clean. I've always stayed away from white things because I can damage them immediately with something I spill on myself. But this is kind of a white with some black polka dots. I love polka dots. And when I put this on today with the tan I'm starting to get in my gray hair, I thought, you know, maybe I could go back to wearing some things that have white in them. My mother was a redhead with a lot of freckles. I got her pale skin. I also have a lot of freckles and white never looked good on me. It always made me look washed out kind of sick. But when I put it on this morning with my grayish hair, I thought, you know, I might want to start looking at some colors. 
And then I started thinking about the fact that women color their hair for so many years. And I was one of those. And some shoulder injuries and some back injuries made me think that it was just getting too difficult for me to continue to color my hair. And so I started looking at some of the history of hair coloring, and I just found it so interesting that I wanted to share it with you. In the 1950s, only 7% of women dyed their hair. Now, 75% of women dye their hair. L'Oreal came out in 1909 with some hair dye. Now you could only get this done in salons and many of them had back doors that you could come into if you wanted to get your hair dyed because having your hair dyed was associated with being a loose woman or being a chorus girl or a starlet. So Normal women back then, average women kind of frowned on your hair being dyed, but now it is such a common day-to-day -day thing for women. And a lot of that came about around 1956 when Clairol came out with a home dye kit where women could do it in the privacy of their bathroom and people wouldn't know that they were dyeing their hair. They also told consumers about how much safer this dye was and tried to relieve their fears of the dye being harmful. They even had a commercial that came out and said, does she or doesn't she, when it talked about a woman's hair being dyed. And the movement was on from there on where women started coloring their hair to look younger. The hair dye commercials encouraged you to do this to make you look younger and to encourage you to stay looking more sexy. They made it sound like if you had gray hair that you were no longer desirable. So this is the movement that happened. So it's a relatively new movement that women were dyeing their hair. And I just thought that was so interesting when you look back at the history of how all of that came about. Now, this is an old study, but I still found the numbers interesting. 51% of women were dyeing their hair because they were scared of what would happen if they stopped dyeing it, that they would look older. 18% had dyed it for so long that they were not ready to find out what was underneath. 14% didn't like dealing with the growing out process, which I can tell you that is probably the toughest part of it. I've done it many, many times, and then I would fall back and start dying it again. And I'd get so far grown out and I'd be like, I just can't do it. And even during this time, I have felt like at times, maybe I should die it again, but now I've come so far, I really don't wanna turn back and start all over again. And 10% thought that having gray hair would impact them at work. That is also something that I thought about. In fact, when I was passed over for that last job that I told you about in one of my last videos for a promotion, I wondered then if me letting my hair start to go gray played a factor in that. Now, 25% of women don't color their hair. And here is why they don't. 40% say that they like their natural color as is. 23% are worried about the chemicals in the dye. 21% says it costs too much to dye their hair on a regular basis. And 16% say that they feel like they're trying to be someone they're not. Now, like I said, this is an older study that's about 10 to 15 years old, but I found it very, very interesting that a lot of those same categories, I think, affect us today when we think about letting our hair grow gray. And even though I've let mine grow gray, it still has some black streaks in it. And that's why I thought maybe changing some colors might complement my hair growing out into the shade rather than look so bold that maybe they call attention to the fact that my hair is growing out into the shade. Let me know what you think about that. If you have gray hair or you're letting it go gray, have you changed the color of the clothes that you wear based on the fact 
that your hair has changed colors. Now, I know we kind of got off on to a little bit of history there about hair color, but I want to get back to some of the other things that we use that are free that benefit us. We use the Roku box instead of cable. We shut off cable a few years back. And yes, we do miss having some of the live sports, but it got so difficult to try to have ESPN, ESPN Plus, ESPNU, CBS Sports. And even if you followed one team, they would divide their games where you had to have all these different apps. So we had to let our sports love kind of go by the wayside at least i did when it came to college men's basketball because that was my favorite thing but even here in the camper i brought my ipad not a tv and i've downloaded several apps that i have really been able to utilize here in the camper just with use of my internet abc has a free app that i use that i can watch reruns of general hospital and i can watch movies on there i've really enjoyed the abc app i also have tubi i have pluto i have free form i have free v crackle plex film rise and classic movies now on Pluto TV, they have channels designated to some of your favorites, including Love Boat has its own channel, Six Million Dollar Man, there's Godzilla channels, and there's a Walking Dead channel where I was able to catch the brand new premiere of the latest Walking Dead without having to pay the AMC Plus. You have to learn what you can find on there, but they have been so valuable to us. It's kept me from having to pay for any cable TV, even here in the park. Another set of stats that I wanted to share with you that I thought was super interesting as we think about coloring our hair and how important appearance is, women were tracked to see how much time they spent on their appearance on Mondays, versus how much time they spent on their appearance on Fridays. And as we know, when you get up Monday, you're tired, but you have the whole week ahead. You want to make a good impression. And by Friday, you just want to get through Friday and you just don't care. Styling hair on Mondays, women spent 23 minutes on average. By Friday, they spent six. Applying makeup on Monday, women spent 18 minutes. By Friday, they spent two. Picking out an outfit on Mondays, women spent 16 minutes on average. And by Friday, they spent one. <laughs> so as we think about some of this in our appearance and how much stock we put in our appearance, our clothes, our hair color, it just brings a lot of things to mind to ponder on. And I wanted to share some of that with you today as we talk about free things, including our natural hair color. Now, one of the things that my husband and I did when we owned our business is a couple of times in the summer, we would have a book swap. We would set out tables in front of our business. We had several boxes of books that we would put out there and the only rule was that you couldn't leave more than you took. We didn't want to end up with more books than we started with. But you could trade a book for a book or you could take a book if you didn't have something to trade. And this way we ended up with all kinds of new books to read without having to purchase other books. It was kind of the same philosophy as the clothes swap that we did here in the park, which I absolutely love. I wish more communities would think about doing some of these swaps. These free swaps are fun for the community and they're also great for your pocketbook because you can get different clothes, different books. You can trade lots of things like that and everybody gets something new and nobody spends any money. So I just wanted to share some of my thoughts on those things today. I hope you enjoyed them. And I hope you will stick around and give me a thumbs up. And I hope you'll be here for the next video. Have a great day.